Hey guys, did you know that this league held of ice quality changed to be base radius per quality? So you, you are getting 0.2 meters to radius per 20 quality. So I had an idea and I did almost exact this build in 3.18. Uh, and uh, since then I realized that yeah, Held of Ice can be very pleasant for clear speed, but this time it has a lot more AOE. So I managed to reach 4 meters explosion radius per explosion uh, for Held of Ice. And this is mainly focusing on Held of Ice. However, this build is just pure glass cannon. It has no tank in this whatsoever. It doesn't even have good life. However, it could be fixed if you just get a Mage Blood, you know? Mage Blood fixes everything. Or if you have an aura bot, this could actually be one of the best clear speed builds in the game probably. Uh, maybe not with the skill that I'm using to proc Held of Ice, with Ice Spear or something that can reach far away. It could clear just many screens uh, far away from you. Ahead, unique die. Uh, this is Inquisitor uh, and I am relying on the crit and ignore enemy resistances. I'm also using Annihilating Light to triple my elemental damage because Held of Ice is not a spell, it doesn't scale with spell damage. So getting crit chance and it doesn't have base critical strike chance. So getting enough crit chance for it is a bit tricky. However, it doesn't need to have 100% crit chance. Uh, in my plan, I believe it has like it has like 66% crit chance with the Diamond Flask active. Uh, in game it's like 44%. I'm not sure what I'm missing. Right, I know, I, I am forgetting Assassin's Mark, yes. Held of Ice, I managed to get pretty decent damage, but that's, there's some conditional things like uh, Assassin's Mark, you, you, you're not gonna have Assassin's Mark for each Held of Ice, like, explosions, but you don't need that much damage for Held of Ice explosions to chain explode. However, you do need more damage than this if you want to run uh, Wildwood juiced up maps. I pretty much was farming non-juiced up maps, as in like, I was farming tier 16, uh, up to tier 16 maps, but I wasn't using Wildwood. I, I I just skipped the league mechanic completely because it just cannot really do it efficiently. Like I said, this is a glass cannon. As soon as enemies become a bit tankier, and if I cannot freeze enemies, I lose like half of my damage because I'm using Heat Shiver. And the uh, Heat Shiver loses a lot of damage if you cannot freeze enemies. And the tanker enemies just don't freeze. So this is kind of an expensive build already. You kind of need perfect ashes if you want to get enough quality. Also Diala, I also have Adorn Jewel, I also have Corrupted Relocation Patient Boots for movement speed because movement speed was really, really annoying. I couldn't get enough movement speed, even now it does not feel like it has enough movement speed. If you had Aurobot running with you, you could have amazing clear speed, amazing like even tankiness and damage, and you could farm even juiced up maps. But then again, like I can't really talk about uh, that because I, I didn't really play with anyone else and I was just soloing everything. However, this build works extremely well for non juiced up maps if you want to farm Legion, if you want to farm Alva. I've been farming Alva temples still. The double corruption room sells for almost 4 divines. So every 4 maps getting very high chance to, to make a 4 divine by selling the temple. Uh, farming Legion, really nice. Uh, Breach, pretty much anything delirium pretty much anything that spawns a bunch of monsters this works just amazing the league mechanics makes enemies way too tanky although the rewards are really really good but yeah like this build just doesn't really work well with the league mechanics now i am using penance brand of dissipation this is the the cheat brand as i call it however to counter using a meta skill i don't have a single brand node I don't even have the rune binder, so I can only attach one brand to an enemy. And it doesn't matter, I only use this brand. I previously was using Cold Snap of Power, and it was doing pretty good damage, and it's more immediate instant damage. With this brand, you kind of have to ramp up the damage. Uh, the problem that I had was, I'm way too squishy to stand still and cast, especially if I cannot freeze enemies. So I had to figure out a different approach and uh, using Penance Brand of Dissipation. It just does so much damage, even with just a single brand. Just drop it and you can run around like chicken and dodge more dangerous things. However, it does add a bit of delay, especially if there are a bunch of tanky enemies and it takes a bit of uh, like a second or a bit more than a second for something to die for Hell Device chain explosions to take care of the rest. 
So it can be dangerous sometimes. I recently added also gasman damage taken a high level with the cold snap because sometimes enemies will just hit me before I hit them and uh, that would trigger gasman damage taken and pretty much freeze them most of the time. I'm also stacking charms. I'm stacking basically AOE. That's the kind of the main point to stack while the for held of ice with the dialos and ashes and then stack AOE. Uh, getting Templars AOE nodes, getting which AOE nodes and then using charms to stack AOE per power charge. And also getting resistances, because resistances are also difficult to get when you use uh, Annihilating Light and you also use so many uniques. I uh, also got Corrupted Heat Shiver for plus one power charge, this, this costed like six divines I believe, just to maximize, uh, well, everything. Just to make it a bit uh, do more damage and a bit more AOE. I could get to 4.1 meter radius. It's kind of an overkill, you don't need that much, but the more you have, the more likely it's gonna continue a chain exploding. Uh, also, as you can see, I'm missing one blast because I'm using, and it may not be the most efficient way, I'm using Brutal Restrain in here to give myself Traitor and also to get enough Dexterity and to get Movement Speed and Guaranteed uh, Onslaught on Kill for 8 seconds. So, I was just trying to get as much movement speed as I could, that's why I corrupted the Relicash. If you got an Aurobot, you don't need to worry about those things. But getting extra resistances is also nice in here and just getting a lot of dexterity from, from these all nodes. I'm pretty sure the passive tree could be more efficient depending on your needs. I did try to squeeze in a bit of chaos rest, but it's, it's hard to squeeze in chaos rest when you are starving for uh, resistances and you are using so many uniques already. So I have minus 8 chaos resistance, but I have no tankiness, like I have 700 armor and 300 evasion. I don't have block other than what, what I get from the staff. I don't have spell suppression, I don't have any other recovery, I do have leech, cold leech, although the penance brand is mostly lighting, but I do have some cold, but uh, the held of ice obviously is, is cold. Uh, you could get leech on um, large cluster jewel, you don't need blast freeze, it just gives 20% increased cold damage. Initially I thought that I would need blast freeze, but I don't think that I need. And yeah, to get the uh, basic critical strike chance, I'm using uh, these kind of jewels, self-fulfilling prophecy and then more AOE here. A lone messenger of course, so I actually cannot run other auras. It says your aura skills are disabled, but you still can benefit from the aura miser, from someone else providing auras for you. So like hatred, haste would help a lot, like determination, all those things that could make you tanker. Or mage blood. Mage blood, you can fix your resistances easily, you can get armor, evasion, whatever you want, movement speed, whatever you want. So I never would recommend mage blood because I feel like using mage blood makes the build not really a real build. But I feel like this build, I really enjoyed farming with this build. This is probably the most satisfying farming build I have done in a long time. I just kept wanting to farm more and more. If you feel like you are getting bored, you just change Hell of Ice MTX and boom. It feels like a different build now. By the way, I did a video demonstrating 15 different Held of Ice MTXs. I just don't have Gloom MTX and uh, Purple MTX. But all the other ones I showed in the video. So yeah, this build could benefit from Mage Blood really. I'm not gonna go over all of my items, there's not much else to say. Like, Polaric Devastation works really well for clear speed because enemies are gonna be frozen, but the single target damage is inflated here. When I select this one, um, I'm not sure if you should select maximum pulse per brand and you can only have one brand, you, you can see 3.9 million. Well, that is enemies frozen already. So this would be non-inflated single target DPS against tough enemies that cannot be frozen when you don't have your plats up. So around 3 million DPS is not that bad, but uh, when it comes to more tanky enemies, this is like really not enough. But if you freeze enemies and you got your plats active, then it goes to 6 million, which sounds a lot better. And this is only one brand. I For two extra points, you could pick up that and boom, then you, you could have two brands. So you would have like 12 million DPS for extra two points. So yeah, the build could be improved and depending on your budget, but then again, I'm not a fan of Mage Blood. I don't want to recommend Mage Blood, so I'm gonna leave it at that. I kind of decided the next build, I'm not sure still if I will be doing it, but I'm probably gonna be doing Bleed Perforate with a lot of movement speed uh, Gladiator. So we'll see how that goes, but I'm still unsure. Maybe if someone got some interesting build ideas, uh, leave them in the comments below. But for now, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.